It's an old building. Just relax. Besides, I can see an exit door right there. Where? Right there, behind that guy with the hook. From Meg hanging herself to Stewie getting assaulted in a public restroom, here's our top 10 list of the most creepy moments in Family Guy. Number 10, Quagmire's sister. I'm sorry, honey. I just wanted to see who was on Letterman. We're watching Leno, you bitch! No! Let's waste this dick. We all know the creators of Family Guy never shy away from incorporating violence to the show, whether it's aimed towards children, women, or both. Ah, 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 ah. However, in one episode, they tackle this violence head on, and let me tell you, it's pretty dark and creepy. You know, Quagmire, you are pathetic. You have to bring your friends out here with you to do your dirty work? What? What, what do you mean, Jeff? The whole thing kicks off when we find out that Quagmire's sister is in a toxic relationship with her boyfriend, Jeff. Soon, Quagmire and the gang get to know about this and decide to take matters into their own hands. Hey, what's going on, dudes? Brenda just fell. Get your lazy ass up and get my neighbors some beers. Things took a seriously creepy turn when Jeff spirals out of control and poor Quagmire ends up getting killed. But let me remind you, he's Quagmire. He ain't dying anytime soon. He recovers and kills Jeff in a pretty horrific fashion. What the hell? I killed you! I choke myself every day, you bastard. <laughs> Number 9, Santa Stewie. It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> if there's one event that absolutely had to make it into this list, it's when Stewie and Brian had to step up and play Santa Claus during Christmas. It all started when little Griffin and Brian visited Santa Claus in the North Pole and found him in a sorry state. They realized that Christmas was in trouble, so to make things right, they took on the responsibility to become Santa themselves. Ready to join the Mile High Club? What? All right, let's get those reindeer hooked up and get out of here. Okay, the elves are bringing them now. <laughs> Things got pretty creepy when they visited the first house to deliver gifts. They ended up murdering a man and taking a woman and their daughter as hostages. Quick, Stewie, get the bat! Help! Help! Mommy! It's okay, it's okay. It's a dark side of Stewie. Definitely not something anyone wants to see. And let me tell you, they were at the wrong house to deliver those gifts. Do you have a brother? Well, then who the hell is John? Oh my God, we're in the wrong house. Number 8, Quagmire's Nightmare. <laughs> Sonia, stop, please! Come on, you love it. Quagmire is always notorious for his sexual appetite. He sure knows how to rock the perversion game, always pushing the boundaries like a pro, but things took a creepy turn when he met a girl who found it erotic to emasculate, humiliate, and torture Glenn in the sickest, most twisted ways. Okay, Glenn, now that we've covered ourselves in black ink, let's do it until we've created every character in the Chinese alphabet. She kidnapped him and held him hostage in a dungeon, and the most disgusting part, she even forced him to have sex with his own father. I want you to have sex with your father. What? Yep, and I'm gonna watch. Hi, Glenn. Are you crazy? No, no way! Luckily, Peter and Joe managed to track Quagmire down, and stop Sonia in the process. Glenn! Hurry, she'll be back soon. It had a happy ending, but Quagmire and his fans had a creepy experience throughout the episode. Number seven, murder mystery. Oh, he must have brought us here to kill us all. Run, run for your lives. <laughs> What's a better way to kick off a season than by spoofing the one and only Agatha Christie? That's right. The Griffins get a mysterious invitation, taking them to a creepy mansion in the middle of nowhere where they run into some familiar faces. Joe? Peter? What the hell are you guys doing here? 
Well, we got an invitation to a dinner in my honor. The host turns out to be a born-again James Woods. The evening takes a deadly turn when the guests start getting picked off one by one, with the first target being Woods himself. He's dead. Oh my god! Nice. Since everyone at the dinner table was invited there because Woods ruined their lives, everyone was a suspect. Now who here had a motive for wanting James Woods dead? Number 6. Psycho Brother Hello, I'm Tom Tucker. Quahog's newest serial killer has struck again. Since the first victim at Quahog Park last week, three more men have been killed. All of them very, very fat. It's good to meet your long-lost brother, especially if he's a sane psychopathic killer. When Lois finds her long-lost brother locked up in a mental hospital, she decides to bring him home, not knowing he is dangerous. Hello? Lois, it's your father. The hospital called and said you released Patrick. Have you lost your mind? He's incredibly dangerous. Well, unintentionally. Peter activated his trauma, and he sets out on a mission to kill every fat man. This episode really went off the rails when Lois denied to believe that Patrick is the fat man killer, despite finding fat men's bodies in Meg and her brother's room. Lois, that sketch looks a lot like Patrick. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, Quahog has a psychopathic fat man killer on the loose. Number five, Skull. Wow, authentic Native American remains. Peter, I'd put that back if I were you. You may be disturbing a sacred burial site. Remember when Peter found a Native American skull buried in his backyard? It's an old saying, don't stuff your head with things you don't understand, but not for Peter. Yeah, he takes that skull into his possession. But little did he know what was coming next. Later that night, the Griffins start experiencing strange paranormal activity. That. And who can forget it? Chris getting attacked by an evil tree. <laughs> evil spirits ravage the Griffin house and suck it into their world, leaving the Griffins homeless. Quagmire, you gotta help us. We pissed off a bunch of ghosts and now our house is gone and we got no place to stay. A tough spot to be in as a Griffin. Number four, Haunted Asylum. This place is terrible. This episode seemed like the creators asked themselves how far they could push the envelope of horror, and they said, no problem, let's throw Peter and the gang into an abandoned asylum. It all started when Peter and the gang head to the abandoned Quahog Asylum to share stories. As they shared scary stories, they began to hear strange noises and footsteps in the distance. Yeah. Is anybody else getting a little freaked out by all these scary stories? Yeah, even my spine is tingling. The frightened gang ran for their lives and ended up encountering a hook-handed man, who they believed was trying to kill them. However, in reality, he was the property caretaker, Albert. They ended up killing him and burying his body. Guys, before we lay this former military hero to rest, does anybody want to say something? I do. I didn't know Albert very well, but I know he masturbated with his left hand. Well, true to Family Guy's nature, they never failed to give us hard chills. Number three, trip to hell. Round and round, the wheels on the bus. Go round and round. Oh, Peanuts. Is there anything worse for a dog than seeing his family burn in hell? Well, it's dramatizing. <laughs> Brian became a victim of this nightmare after consuming those mushrooms. The moment he consumed those mushrooms, he started hallucinating, seeing different imaginary objects. Seeing Brian in discomfort, Stewie helped him to bed and comforted him to get sleep. It's gonna be okay. Your pal Stewie is right here. Just relax. And get some rest. Brian finds himself in a hellish nightmare, experiencing different rads. Brian's mind-bending journey is a mix of creepy and twisted elements that you won't forget, and it deserved a spot on our list. Number two, 
I quit. Good night, Chris. Good night, Meg. True fans of the show know that Meg is like the living embodiment of a welcome mat for every character. It's a running joke that everyone in Family Guy hates Meg, from the other kids at school to her father, Peter. But she's been strong ever since, taking stands for herself. However, it took a creepy turn when, in one episode, Peter had a story time with Stewie about fairy tales. At the end of the story, while he bids his kids goodnight, Meg's body is shown being hanged. Good night, Stewie. Good night, Chris. Good night, Meg. A tough scene to digest for fans. Number one. Imaginary lollipop. Now let's stop talking about that lollipop and get to work. We have seen Stewie doing unimaginable things in the show, from creating a time machine to killing someone. But at the end of the day, he's still a baby. In one episode, when Brian illegally tries to remove the statue of town hero Puttucket Pat, Stewie decides to use a public restroom despite Brian's warning. All right, great. But before we begin, I'm just going to use the park bathroom at night. Stewie, no! Later, we see him holding a lollipop with some creepy silent captions stating he was assaulted in the restroom by an unseen stranger. He's just imagining the lollipop to block the memory. Creepy part. Brian goes along with it so they can just get back to the statue. I got a lollipop! That's great, bud. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button for more Family Guy content.